Hi Anycubic, yeah, it's Greedy3D here. Do you know that Cobra X you were going to send me to review? Yeah, well you've sent me the Bamboo Labs A1 by mistake. Oh, you haven't? This is the X. Oh, are you sure? Okay. The Anycubic Cobra X is their latest desktop FDM 3D printer that aims to shake up budget multicolor printing with built-in four filament support, fast print speeds and smart features like AI assisted monitoring and automatic leveling with a generous 260 by 260 by 260 millimeter build volume and a promise to cut purge waste and speed up color transitions. It's pitched as a user-friendly machine for makers who want multicolor and multi-material capability without the huge price tag and inconvenience that usually goes with it. Now this isn't going to be a full review of the Anycubic Cobra X. This has been sent to me and it's still in its beta stage at the moment but I'm going to give you a really good idea of everything about the Cobra X and what you can expect and you can see just how this even in its beta stage does such a fantastic job. Now because mine was a beta unit I actually thought they'd forgotten to include any instructions but thankfully they sent me some in electronic format so I was able to put the machine together with absolutely no problem. But you know what even if the instructions had not turned up it's pretty straightforward just how to put it together but don't you worry yours will come with a full set of instructions plus there'll be an online video that lets you know how to set it all up. I was a tad surprised as it arrived reasonably compact for a mid-sized FDM printer. For some reason I was expecting a larger box, but once you slice the tape and fold back the flaps, you are greeted with a very neatly nestled set of components wrapped in foam and plastic. The machine's frame and wiring are all tucked in tidily, nothing dangling loose or vaguely ominous. The protective layers did their job and everything arrived intact as was intended. No breakages, no dents or scrapes inside. Pulling the printer out of the box introduces you to the rough shape of what you're about to build, a gantry style frame with a decent solid looking core. There's a handful of accessories packed alongside, tools and the cables etc. But assembly was not an issue as it was straightforward to complete and I did it all on my own and generally it was self-explanatory. The base, rails and printhead carriage are clearly labelled left and right and fit together using eight screws for each side. The ribbon cables and connectors are intuitive to match by shape and once all connections are made a protective cover can then be attached to additional covers also clearly marked left and right are mounted on either side by just simply pushing them in place and voila in a relatively short time these components are now assembled into a fully functional 3D printer. Fitting the two sport holders on the top is again simple. Each one clips into place and is labelled 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 respectively. Rotate the four pegs about a quarter turn to lock them in. Attach the four equal length Bowden tubes to the spool holders and the number connector to the printhead, matching numbers accordingly of course. This process is again easy and straightforward. Power and rocker switch are located at the bottom rear. Now this is a pet hate of mine and I spend most of the day reaching around 3D printers to turn them on and off in a confined space. Any cubic et al, for the love of all that is holy, please put these switches somewhere easier to get at. That's me, had my moan for the day. The left of the machine yields no inputs for the user as these are all found on the right hand side where what looks like two ACE multi-filament connectors are nestled next to the standard USB port. Another note here, there was no USB stick included with my printer. On startup, the touchscreen UI which nestles also on the front right of the machine flickers to life with a crisp feel and the usual first time prompts walk you through the setup starting off with your Wi-Fi then vibration tests etc as it goes into its self-leveling routine. Note that this touchscreen unlike Bamboo's A1 is definitely not movable so don't try or you wish you hadn't. The Cobra X boasts a standard high definition 720p camera with AI monitoring for the dreaded spaghetti detection, you know, when your print decides to go off the rails. It's got foreign object detection, time lapse too, and it's viewable via a remote app that you can watch from either your desktop or via the pretty nifty Anycubic mobile phone app, which incidentally was a doddle to set up. Being able to remotely monitor your prints is certainly cool and honestly useful, especially for those long prints that might otherwise make you a little bit nervous. Nice also to see a privacy cover on the camera, a really nice touch.
Specifications are where this printer starts to feel like it's aiming above its weight class. Anycubic is pushing that 260 by 260 by 260 millimeter build volume and that's big enough for most projects without eating up the entire desk. The Cobra X claims print speeds up to 600 millimeters a second with of course a recommended cruising speed a little lower at 300 millimeters per second. Now maximum acceleration or it can fly at 20,000 millimeters per second squared but of course a lower rate of maybe 10,000 millimeters per second squared is recommended especially by Anycubic. Dual mode auto leveling is backed by AI assisted motion and flow compensation that promises smoother walls and fewer artifacts at higher speeds. Multicolour capability straight out of the box is a headline feature here. You don't have to clip on extra gadgets to chase for colour printing. On the Cobra X it's built in and Anycubic suggests you can expand that up to 19 colours with optional external ACE units. The clever bit is how the machine shrinks its purge distance from a massive 160mm to about 30mm by redesigning the cutter to nozzle spacing that's advertised as cutting both print time and material waste dramatically when swapping colours. We'll talk about that more later. The built-in RFID scanner built into the Anycubic Cobra X makes it really easy to add any cubic filament. Just touch the scanner, the printer knows exactly what you're putting in. Manually feed the filament into the Bowden tube. Now there's no motor to pull it through, which is not a bad thing, it's one thing that can't go wrong. Push it through manually until it enters all the way down and the printer recognises which one you've got. Now you can of course use your favourite brand of any kind of filament. You don't need to use any cubic. The RFID scanner won't pick them up of course but use the one that you want. Go into the screen and just tell it what kind of material you're using, what colour it is and it will do the rest for you. On the materials that it can use it's built to plough through the standard PLA, PETG, TPU and it supports more advanced filaments like ASA and PVA too without much fuss thanks to a hardened steel 0.4mm nozzle that can heat up to 300 degrees centigrade plus a spring steel heated bed that can go up to 100 degrees centigrade. Now nozzles can be swapped out for other diameters like 0.8mm, 06 or maybe a 0.25mm. That depends on whether you want a finer detail or faster extrusion. To slice your creations, it's recommended that you use any cubic slicer next, which has got quite a bit going on under the hood. Well, here's a clearer picture of what it actually offers without getting too long or technical. At its core, Slicer Next is built on the open source Orca Slicer engine, but tailored for any cubic machine. So you get the familiar slicing workflow plus printer specific tweaks. It supports importing and positioning of common 3D model formats like STL. OBJ 3MF files, with 3MF files being particularly handy because it can carry material and print settings right into the file itself. The software includes pre-configured printer and material profiles that match any Cubic's FDM printers and filament types, which means sensible defaults for PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS and more. So you don't have to adjust every setting manually. You can, if you want, still fine-tune things like layer height, infill density, print speed, supports, automatic and manual, plus temperature, giving you flexibility without driving into a completely blank slate. In the preview section, uh, there's a Wi-Fi printer connection via IP, one-click G-code upload to cloud files, and ye oldie users can also save the USB stick and wander to the printer on foot. It also offers a layer-by-layer -layer preview so you can visually inspect how the print will build, seeing support structures, infill patterns, and estimated time material uses, etc. before you hit the print. For multicolour setups, the Slicer has integrated multicolour management and painting tools too, and they tie in with the X's capabilities. All in all, it's a feature-rich slicer blending Orca's advanced slicing with user-friendly presets and extended printer connectivity. Yeah, some users in the community still find it less polished than the standalone Orca, but I've got to be honest, I really do like this slicer, and for a beginner-friendly slicer, it's absolutely perfect. For the X's very first print, it's a Benchy, and if I didn't print a Benchy, I'm sure I'd be breaking some kind of 3D printer law. Print 
printed in any cubic green filament. This is just PLA and it's printed beautifully. It took about 14 minutes. There was no stringing. There's no blips on there. Look, it's a bench sheet and it's done exactly what you would expect it to do. It's a lovely looking bench sheet. No issues, no dramas. We've all seen benches and it's printed beautiful. Next, another test that was on the machine ready to go. This is the first layer test and I always find this one really hypnotic to watch and it's always an air of trepidation is it going to do it is it going to not do it what is it going to look like but let me reassure you once this had finished it was absolutely beautiful look at that for a first layer test it came off really easy and it just did it do you know what i think just have a look at this i, I, I bet you'll think oh he's been sent one of these he's saying this just look at the quality of that i can't fault it i genuinely can't fault that it's a lovely lovely first layer test just going to ramp the difficulty up just a tiny bit with a bit of a wibbly wobbly dinosaur and that again perfect can't fault it i really really can't it's smooth where it needs to be smooth everything moves it's all printed no stringing wonderful just what you like to see so far so good with the cobra x now I'm going to say I am not a fan of multicolour printing. I think it wastes so much filament. It just grieves me to see all that filament in a bucket that you throw away at the end of it. But we need to test the multicolour capabilities of the Cobra X. So my first one was just a benchy, just a four colour benchy, nice and quick, nice and simple, just to see if it did it as you would expect. And again, it did, it flew through it, no issues, no problems. All the changes went really, really smoothly. There was no bleeding, everything went as it should. I'm just happy with this test so far everything looking good everything as i would have expected it not a horrendous amount of poop on this one as you can see but there's only a few changes uh, we'll do some more advanced tests later but so far again it's done what we've asked it to do now nothing is always all rosy there are some negatives for me the multicolor printing of course is a great option to have built in but unless you're using something like the ace pro unit the filament spools natively on the cobra x are open to the atmosphere and the elements of your workspace so if you're printing in an environment like me in a man cave outside in winter the changes in temperature and more importantly the changes in moisture in the air can have an adverse effect on the print quality results especially if you're using those more elaborate materials like abs or pet G. now thankfully the x is compatible with the ace units that any cubic offer and that will heat and of course dry the units but it doesn't come with the printer also because the spools feed manually and what i mean by that is there's no bamboo labs a1 style powered ams external system uh, you can use dryers the external dryers like the chi2 systems filler partner or sun lose sp2 filament dryer they can be used easily with this printer but out of the box as a standard standalone printer the cobra x has no filament drying or heating ability the other thing that I don't really like is the camera placement on the Cobra X. On the K3 V2, that seems to offer a much better picture orientation than on the Cobra X. On the Cobra X, I did feel that I just couldn't see the print clearly. Well, maybe that's just me having a little gripe, but I much prefer the orientation of the K3 V2's camera, which again, you have to print the little case and screw it in yourself. It just seems to be in a better location. Now, I understand that that doesn't move up and down with the Z-axis. So again, maybe just my gripe, but it's certainly something I'm going to mention because I've noticed it. Now, it'll depend on when you watch this video to find out exactly how much the Anycubic Cobra X is selling for. But at the moment, it's a Kickstarter campaign, and I'll put this link in the description so you can follow it through. Uh, it's saying here, if you put a £10 deposit, you can get this from as little as £239, which is a pretty darn amazing price for a printer of this calibre. But again, depends on when you watch this, will depend on the prices that are going. They usually do an early bird deal, etc., etc. I'm not going to get drawn into the Kickstarter argument. I'm just going to give you the links and you can follow them through if this is a printer that you're interested in getting. So that's the Anycubic Cobra X in a nutshell. As I said, this is not going to be a full review. That wasn't the purpose of today's video. Today, I just wanted to show you what you're going to get for your money, what bang for buck you're going to get, what it does, some of the specifications of the machine. But remember, I've got a beta product. Things may change for the better I've got no doubt but from what I've used of it so far I'm really really impressed with it oh it's pretty much churned out everything I have thrown at it so it gives you a rough idea of exactly what you're going 
to get. Now, if you want to leave me a comment, tell me what you think of the Cobra X. Do you like it? Is there any hesitations? What do you think of it overall? Uh, join the channel, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, think about joining the Greedy 3D Patreon and uh, make sure that you leave me that comment. That's the really important thing. I hope you've enjoyed this today. I've tried not to make it too in-depth and too long-winded because this is just a, a taster on the Anycubic X. Anycubic have done a really good job of this. I genuinely mean that. And you can see that from the quality of the prints. So uh, thank you for Anycubic for sending it me. And again, just want to reiterate here that I've not been told to say anything. I'm definitely not being paid to do this video. So nobody's paying me to say this or say that. I'm genuinely impressed with the Anycubic X so far. But in a couple of months time, month or so maybe, I'll do a follow-up video and I'll see how it's gone. I want to put it through some real intensive printing. Hope you've enjoyed that so far. Leave me a comment. See you next time.